Howdy, Practical Patriots and Practical Preppers. Yochel to Gross. I was Texas Hey Folks, Sharing Practical Nurse. Got to do this video because, uh, just because it's that time of the year, folks, uh, out here in Central Texas where we have bow hunting and people like to use compound bows. And I've seen some pretty interesting traumatic amputations of thumbs and a few other digits because I guess they use this for leverage and the string goes and there goes the thumb. And of course, I've seen people who like to kind of do, you know, like maybe empty the bottom of this, <laughs> you know, and they decide to go play with maybe one of these, or they decide that maybe it's just a great time to get some things done around the house, okay? And that usually doesn't end out well for them, does it? Because one thing I can't stand, and we all have those kind of friends that uh, basically think that, by golly, this goes good with everything. That's why I have a uh, job security. But <laughs> no matter how or what causes the mechanism of injury, folks, you treat an amputated finger the same way across the board. Now, let's get started here, okay? What I'm doing for y'all, just a little reminder, is I'm putting this really cool little IFAT kit together for you. And it's coming along pretty good. I've already got like a tourniquet and a few other things in here uh, for y'all. And as soon as I get this done, that I'm going to definitely give this to one lucky person in the drawing. Now, that said, what's going to be included in here is a finger amputation kit, all right? Now, that said, folks, you can make this on your own. It doesn't take a lot of stuff, and you don't have to spend a lot of money to make a finger amputation kit. So let's go down the line of uh, the list of parts here. Grab your pen and paper. Pause if you have to, but here we go. For starters, folks, what you're going to have is you're going to have a bag, a plastic bag, and I prefer, of course, the ones that have the zip lock on there, all right? Take that bag. Empty the contents of bag. On there, it says, if I can focus this here, finger amputation kit, okay? Right here, this bag stays empty for now, okay? Inside comes another kit, another Ziploc bag. Again, folks, I prefer this one. Now, if you can get the ones that have the red tops on there, awesome, that will alert us that maybe there's something in there or just uh, writing finger amputation kit on your bag lets us know the medical staff when that person arrives that there is an amputated finger in there, all right? Or whatever the case may be. Uh, I was telling you, I did a first aid class one time and a person brought in an ear that had gotten bitten off one time. True story. All right, now, that said, folks, you're going to need, you're writing this down, right? You're going to need about like three two-by-twos, minimum. Three two-by-twos, or you can use, you know, like four four-by-fours, four whatever the case may be. I prefer this, the ones that are wrapped, but it doesn't have to be. This is a clean procedure, not a sterile procedure, all right? You need a set of gloves whatever is your size or fancy and i like to keep a sharpie in there why because i like to note the time of the injury on the bag that i put the, that the amputated appendage on okay that simple now let me show you how this works so you got your buddy out there he decides whatever the scenario may be he decides to add a little bit of this with some of the other items that i showed you and the next thing you know uh he, he, things are going great things are going awesome but all of a sudden you know, uh, you hear a stop and whatever it is he's doing, okay? And the next thing you know, he goes like this, <laughs> all right? And then he may do something like this, followed by, <laughs> all right? Please, the first thing I want you to do is set that person on the ground. Why is that? Because it's a 50-50 split chance in my experience that person is going to faint on you when this happens. Not always, again, about a 50-50 split chance, y'all like that, that he's going to faint or she is going to faint, okay? Just take my word for it. Set him on the ground. The next thing I want you to do, folks, is always first focus on your patient. If it's you doing this, that's fine. If you're, doing, you're helping out a friend, that's fine. But here's what I want you to do. First thing, I'm going to magically grow my finger back here. Okay, there you go, all right? First thing you do, open those gauzes, okay? Now, if you've ever watched me work, those of you who came to see me at the hospital and say, oh, aren't you, okay? You'll notice in a bad situation, when I got my hands on something, i.e. trying to hold pressure or something, all right? And there it is. Did you catch that? Give it a try, okay? Take a couple of those out, folks. Direct pressure. Please, direct pressure, okay? Direct pressure. One of the other things that I want y'all to do, oops, forgot to mention in this kit, you will get... Some of this, okay? Coban, Coflex, Horse Wrap, it's got a lot of different names. I want you, when you put pressure on that thing, folks, I want you to take that thing and wrap that puppy up, okay? Wrap it up, wrap it up. 
All right, that's going to help with the bleeding. Now, it's been my experience that when I find or when I come across traumatic finger amputations, folks, they don't seem to bleed a lot, but it just takes just a few seconds to put some gauze and some pressure on that, okay? Next thing I want you all to do, you know, most of us, I mean, it's, it's still warm here at this time of the year here in Texas. Most of us have got a drink, okay? I want you to take the first bag that's empty. Take your drink. I don't care what it is as long as it has ice in it, all right? Listen carefully. As long as it has ice in it, dump it down in that bag, in your first bag. I'm going to try to do all this, folks, using these hands, okay? Next thing I want you to do is take that second bag, the second bag only. If you can, all right, open up another one of these two-by-twos, take the appendage, put it in there, all right? If you have water, excellent. If you have normal saline, excellent. Please do not pour alcohol or hydrogen peroxide on this, okay? Take it. Simulating this, of course. Put the appendage in there, folks. Inside the plastic bag. All right. Zip it up. Again, trying to do this without anybody else's help. <laughs> All right. All right. Put it in there. Wrap that appendage in that gauze, okay? In the gauze, and then put it in the bag of ice, okay? In, okay, do not, please do not, folks, do not put the appendage directly on the ice. Put it inside the separate bag with the gauze around it that is wetting down with water, water or normal saline only, okay? Nothing else, not beer, not alcohol, not gasoline, not turpentine, not hydrogen peroxide, or anything else that I have seen, all right? In the bag of ice. Zip it up. Get you and get the appendage and you and your patient to the hospital immediately, okay? Uh, I can't stress this enough, folks. It's a good idea, like I said, to write down the time that this happened on the bag, but get them to the hospital, all right? You will be amazed what we can do now with appendages that have been chopped off. Okay, <laughs> I just want to go over that real quick, folks, because trust me, I have seen people do it wrong for a long time, and sometimes they can do more damage than good. Please, folks, make yourself a kit like that, because people that'll say it never happens, well, guess what? I make a living off of it'll never happen, and that's why when people say that, I, you know what? Things happen in history that started off with either it'll never happen, or hold my beer, and watch this, okay? I'm not kidding. I make my living off of that. Eh, you can view that any way you want, but that is what it is. All right, folks. Questions, comments, leave them below. Okay, anything at all, just let me know. By the way, mmm, mmm. I have started, because other people do, a GoFundMe account. I will try to remember to include the link in the item description of this, of this video. Um, you know, it's going to help offset cost of ammunition y'all want me to try, plates and armor y'all want to try. I will also use it, folks, for a very good cause. Hurricanes, disasters, whatever. I like to go help out as much as I can with my boss's blessing, but I also like to take enough materials and supplies with me to actually help out. So anything y'all do, please don't feel pressured or feels obligated. I, this is something I enjoy doing, but if you want to donate, grab your change that you picked up out of your car, throw it in there, okay? Till I see y'all again, I'm Giant Practical Nurse, <laughs> out here. Don't forget to hydrate. All right, folks, a couple of things here. Oops, uh, crossbows. I've seen a couple of traumatic amputations of thumbs from crossbows. All right, I know I said compound bows, but it's compound. It's, it's bow season basically out here, and I see a lot of people use a lot of crossbows and compound bows. And uh, crossbows cause a lot of traumatic amputations of thumbs. Another thing also is protect yourself first and foremost, okay? If you're not the person doing your own uh, amputation and you're the person coming in to, to assist with the first aid or do the first aid, Protect yourself. Make sure you put your gloves on, and I've included that in the kit also. Don't include, don't forget to include one in yours, okay? So I'll see you all next time out here.